You're watching episode 19 of Statistically Speaking. The Daily Poll focuses today on Goa. Although it is the smallest state with just two Lok Sabha constituencies, historically both the seats have turned into bastions. In North Goa, uh, Shripad Nayak of the BJP has won the constituency five times, while South Goa has seen fierce battles between the BJP and the Congress, but currently is being held by Francisco Sardena of the Congress Party. For the South constituency, BJP has picked industrialist Zapali Dempo, while Sharipat Nayak looks to retain a North Goa for the sixth time. Congress is yet to name their candidates, but the Amadmi Party has entered the fray too. So, what do the people of Goa think? We're going to find that out today and what exactly is... Uh, they're looking for what they want. We're going to show that to you on our screens momentarily. Uh, in fact, uh, when we asked them, what is your biggest issue in the Lok Sabha elections? Uh, most of the people went on to say that it is obviously development paired with a few other important issues that they have always felt uh, have plagued Goa. Now, development is not basically just about infrastructure. It is also about digital today. Unemployment is also an issue at 31.55%. Uh, this continues to be a major issue in a number of states. We have done this show and we have taken polls from other parts of the country as well. And they continue to show unemployment as the biggest disruptor when it comes to uh, poll uh, in, in, uh, opinion polls and polls which talk about what the people of this country are going to be in fact uh, uh, voting for. Moving on, uh, we are going to also talk about which issues uh, are going to be uh, you know, used in 2024 as the basic election issues. Is it going to be all about uh, the work done? Is it going to be the party? And we are also going to talk about on what basis people are going to uh, figure out whom they're going to vote for. Of course, the work done is uh, the biggest component there, with 54.22% of the people feeling that uh, the party that has done the maximum work and the best work should be chosen as the next party in that particular state. And this is how Goa feels. The candidate is important. The party, of course, uh, uh, is uh, made up of loyalists. Some people, regardless of what the party has done, continue to vote for that particular party. We're going to go to the next slide. But let me remind you that these are polls uh, which try and talk about what the people of particular part of the country are feeling at this point in time. They are in no way an indication of uh, uh, you know, what the whole country feels. This is perhaps a microcosm of what we can look at when the results come out in the first week of June. Uh, we also need to understand how has the Narendra Modi concept or how has the Prime Minister and his image helped uh, at, you know, in taking uh, the state of Goa forward. Uh, people feel that 35.11% people feel that Prime Minister uh, has really performed well as the Prime Minister. It's his image, it's his uh, uh, oratory skills, it's his guarantee that has also uh, you know, infuse confidence in the voter to uh, uh, go back to the BJP time and again. Moving on to question four, uh, we in fact went on to ask viewers, uh, you know, how is it possible, uh, how will the Modi factor help in 2024? That again boils down to what the Prime Minister has done. The Modi factor is a strong one. The BJP is pivoted on the Modi factor and it will continue to reign supreme when uh, uh, we get to see how the Lok Sabha polls are going to be uh, uh, infusing more energy into the voter to go and uh, cast their ballot for the Bharati Janta Party. Moving on to the next question. Uh, it's also important to understand uh, who do you think uh, will win or form the government in 2024? Well, this is a big question, but a lot of pundits feel that the writing is on the wall. It's already preordained that it's going to be the BJP that's going to be uh, taking uh, this opportunity by the horns again. Uh, the NDA is at 44.88%. The India Alliance in Goa 
surprisingly, gets uh, uh, the second slot at 40.57%. They feel that the India Alliance has a chance, perhaps the only state that we have seen so far, which goes on to put so much confidence in uh, the India Alliance. All the other states that we have talked about in the past were uh, not so confident if the India Alliance could make that cut. All right, joining us on the show is Harshad Sharma, Congress spokesperson. Savi Rodriguez, BJP leader, also joins us on the program. Valmiki Nayak, Aam Aadmi Party spokesperson here with us. Nikhil Jain, political analyst with us on the program as well. Last but not the least, Rajalakshmi Joshi, political analyst, joins us on the program as well. Savi, I'll begin with you. Well, are you surprised to see that, uh, you know, a number of people from Goa, you are from Goa, feel that the India Alliance has an equal chance uh, in those two Lok Sabha seats uh, that Goa is going to be, in fact, uh, voting on? Well, actually, no, I'm not surprised, Vineet, because the ground uh, movement of uh, not, the, not exactly the India Alliance, but Congress, Goa has been a bastion of the Congress for a very long time. And it's been the last 15 years that the BJP has made immense roads into the bastion, which was formerly the Congress bastion, and now they have the government with a majority. In fact, even right now, the South Goa is considered and is seen as a very strong bastion of the Congress. Now that they've got a tie-up with the Aam Aadmi Party, they are expected to be a little bit more stronger. However, the reason why BJP has been making inroads into the Congress over the last 15, into, the, into Goa over the last 15 years has been because of immense work, starting with Mr. Manod Parikar, and then you had leaders like Sripad Nayak, and you had leaders like Rajendra Alikar, who's now the governor of Bihar, and of course, the current uh, chief minister, Dr. Pramod Savan. They have managed to make inroads into what was seen as traditionally Congress bastions, traditionally hardcore Congress voter base, and they have made inroads. Like in the last elections, if you go to see, Navilim, which is a predominantly Congress constituency, had seen a BJP face win. And these are changes that are happening on the ground in Goa. The reason why the changes in the ground has happened is because there's been a lot of, while the voters continue to be with the Congress, you know, in terms of their loyalty, a considerable amount of them exist with the Congress. A lot of them has, Congress has been devoid of leadership at a state level. And because of this lack of leadership at the state level, and because of this immense work done by the BJP over a period of time in terms of infrastructure development, in terms of, uh, you know, the, uh, the initiatives that have gone down to the grassroots level, both from state as well as central-based schemes, there is a gravitational pull that's happening to the BJP, and there's been immense work done. In fact, a considerable amount of Congress leaders moved into the BJP simply because they wanted to move on a development platform, which they found never existed in the, in the Congress. And that, that's one of the reasons why Congress is on a decline as a party. As a voter base, there are still a lot of people who believe in the Congress as far as Goa is concerned. And as you rightly said at the start, it's one of the few states that Congress does have a loyal following, but it is the local leaders that are completely, completely decimating and disillusioning the voters at a ground level. So that, by far, is where BJP takes an advantage, has been doing phenomenal work. And that is why today, when we put in a candidate, like in South Goa, for example, Pallavi Dempo is a candidate that is, rep is new. She comes from an industrial background. She comes from a philanthropic background. Family is very connected with sports, worked in, in, in the football arena, worked in the education arena. So that's creating a, a little bit of buzz and a dis, a, a disruption. And what has the Congress and the Alliance done? Till now, they have not decided on a candidate. And therefore, they have lost what is considered to be 10 days advance in terms of the election campaign, campaigning that they could go for. In fact, I was very surprised that the Aam Aadmi Party decided to let go of, uh, of the state like Goa, especially South Goa, where they have done immense work. Keep aside the fact that there's currently a lot of allegations over the fact that they have 45 crores utilized during the Goa election. But Aam Army Party in South Goa was really making the inroads. By giving away that bastion to Congress is left everybody confused who have been supporting the Aam Army Party. Because right now, 
with no candidate declared, and they are actually the ones going down on the ground and campaigning even now with no candidate de declared, they should have put their own candidate. In fact, they had announced Wednesday Vegas, uh, Vegas at one point of time, and I don't know why they didn't do that. And this, this, whole, uh, this whole jamboree of working together as far as uh, Goa is concerned is actually not going to work to the Ahmadmi Party's benefit in Goa. They had, an, they had an absolute chance of making an inroad. But having said that, why do people repose their faith in Narendra Modi? They repose their faith in Narendra Modi, and I keep saying that all the time, is because they do not see political aristocracy as far as Narendra Modi is concerned. They see a common man who's risen up to the stage of a prime minister and who's delivering on what is essentially the basic necessities of what a common man needs as far as survival, as far as social welfare, as far as economic welfare is concerned. Now, I can give you the entire data, but it will take you a whole hour of explaining the entire data for you. But the point is this, how is Goa going to swing? Hmm. In North Goa, for certainly it's going to be BJP. And in South Goa, because of the mistakes of Congress itself, hmm. it will swing to the BJP as well. Okay, BJP all right. has been making tremendous inroads as far as the, the entire bastion is concerned. In fact, in South Set itself, they will make tremendous inroads. All right, let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's also get a uh, counter to that from Mr. Harshad Sharma, a Congress spokesperson on the program as well. Mr. Sharma, are you there with us? Yes, sir. Uh, will the mistakes of the Congress party, perhaps at the center and other areas, also cost the Congress party its dominance in, in South Goa? Uh, sir, first of all, uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. So, sir, uh, somehow I got disconnected uh, in the middle. I was listening very carefully. Uh, the BJP spokesperson was uh, telling us about uh, a lot at Congress. And there were a few good points, but I want to ask uh, him and uh, uh, the voters of uh, the Goa that what's happening with BJP's infighting. Uh, we see uh, Manwar Parikar's son, uh, he's, uh, <laughs> he's giving some uh, corruption charges on Minister Babush. There is infighting we can see between uh, the CM Pramod Savanji and uh, Vishwajit uh, Raneji. So, uh, first of all, uh, BJP should uh, do its homework that uh, they are on a same platform that they will fight together in this election. There is an issue for South candidate that CM wanted uh, his uh, wife to contest and the party leadership has given uh, industrialist ticket in South Goa, which is already our stronghold. And there is anti-incumbency against NTP, Shripad Nayakji. So uh, what I feel, what uh, my observation about Goa is that people of Goa are uh, very much focused on issues. They don't work uh, uh, with the BJP. Uh, uh, talking about your channel, but major part of the media, what uh, uh, their agenda is, and that there are issues like inflation, unemployment, there is CMI data. There are uh, data available on various websites. Uh, where Niti Aayog is saying that uh, has, uh, maximum... Mr. Sharma, there seems to be a problem with your connection. I request you to please log out and log in again. In the meantime, let me also welcome Advocate Gyanendra Mishra, uh, political analyst, into this conversation as well. Raja Lakshmi Joshi, I'll come to you now. Uh, well, like I said in my opening monologue, the uh, state of Goa is just a microcosm of what the country uh, is thinking right now, but unlike the rest of the country, Goa is giving an equal chance to the Congress party. Is that a scenario? Do you think uh, that could also be replicated in other states? And is that a worry for the Bharati Janata Party? And are you taking the Congress party too lightly? Are you underestimating them? Uh, Vineet, is that for me? Yes. Uh, good evening, Vineet. Uh, you know, um, I think the Congress is uh, uh, getting confident because uh, last time around, they had won the South Goa seat. Yes, that is true. 
but then uh, th that uh, actually they should not forget that uh, you know it is not a proven trend or you know they cannot uh, call themselves as too comfortable there because in 2014 they had lost it so uh, you know this uh, they cannot just take it for granted and say that uh, this is something that they have found themselves a safe seat so this is by no means a safe seat for them and as per uh, the trends and as per even you know your own survey was showing that uh, definitely all the people they want pm modi to be the pm again and uh, the uh, he, his popularity has by no means decreased you know there are definitely a, uh, you know some issues uh, that uh, definitely need uh, to be looked into like uh, you know uh, rightly about the uh, inflation about the employment all these kind of issues are there but uh, you know when it comes to goa uh, it is not uh, like the other states where uh, the people are uh, mostly dependent on the other jobs in goa uh, it is a lot of all these uh, pharmaceutical companies and uh, mining and uh, a major part of it is in the tourism and also into agriculture and to the uh, uh, you know the hospitality and you know all of that so uh, all of this gets a huge boost because of the airport the new airport that has come up so that at mopa so you know that is definitely making a huge shift into everything so, you know there was a small there was a decline in the economy uh, in the covid years but then again it has uh, definitely taken a big boost now in the last couple of years so then uh, you know that issue is actually you know people are not really feeling the need to bring in a, a maybe a new prime minister so they don't feel that they should be looking uh, at it uh, from that point of view so you know when it comes to the um, lok sabha uh, elections uh, vinit as you rightly know you know everybody is looking at who will be the prime minister and they definitely want pm modi back as the prime minister and that is the most uh, biggest issue right now so that uh, is definitely going to be uh, something that uh, you know the people are definitely going to be supporting pm modi and i don't see any change in that so you know even in uh, south goa right now if you look at it uh, has the congress or their allies announced any candidate as yet they still don't know who is going to be doing that so at least you know the bjp they have a uh, they have a a uh, problem of plenty i would say we need so that is something that is a very good problem to have perhaps but uh, whereas in the congress and even the allies you know the aam aadmi party was going to be announcing their candidate but then they withdrew because they wanted the congress to be announcing it and they were in this alliance so all of this is uh, you know we don't even know if they're going to even announce it or not because uh, it might it could even end up like what is happening in arunachal pradesh where you don't have any opposition candidate so you know the it starts from there we need so they don't even know who the candidate is and they are talking about winning in huge numbers so that is something laughable so i think that they need to be setting up their house first they need to be putting up their leadership right uh, all of that you know then their entire focus of the entire congress leadership is focused on uh, just three people uh, one of whom you know they uh, she was uh, uh, not willing to be contesting from raibareli so they have put her into the rajya sabha and the other two they don't know what they're going to be doing uh, uh, yes uh, mr rahul gandhi he has well, uh, the the, the, the new the, mr robert wadra could be contesting from amethi is what we have heard confirmation about it from the congress leadership beneath so there is there is always you know there is a huge confusion uh, only in this uh, you know the entire thing is focused on this one family and they are not even bothered about what is happening in a state like goa so they have not yet even uh, uh, finalized on the names of the candidates so how can you even talk about whether that candidate is popular whether the candidate what kind of a hold they have on the uh electorate you know all of those are secondary they don't even know who the candidate is going to be so most of these congress leaders they are running away from the thought of this uh, lok sabha election and all of them want to take the uh, rajya sabha route so that is something that is concerning when you look at it from the congress perspective so i think that you know all these other uh, aspects aside people still feel that even you know they may they definitely feel the pinch of uh, inflation they definitely feel the pinch of unemployment yes they do 
but then beyond that there are some other factors which actually completely negate all of this there are these other factors like uh, you know all these other yojanas where you have the jan aushadi kendras where you have uh, you know all the all the uh, uh, benefits of uh, uh, you know the uh, pm mudra yojana and then you okay. have the let's uh, let's the let's get a let's get a response from uh, nikhil also on what you have said nikhil what is the congress going to do in goa uh, you know the, the the prospects look much better than some of the other states uh, for the congress party uh, in in goa and, and it's an opportunity that uh, they definitely cannot scramble so in first of all i would like to correct some factual inaccuracies that sabio made while he was making a statement goa actually when you talk about the lok sabha elections is not particularly a bastion for the congress party and i'll tell you why since 1999 the bjp has always had a higher vote share than the congress party in the lok sabha elections in fact the highest vote share that the congress has ever gotten in these past 25 years is in 2019 elections when it got 42.92% compared to the 51.19% of the bjp secondly goa is not one of those rare states where the bj where the congress has a stronghold anymore there are 22 states in the country where the congress party had a higher than 27% vote share in the previous lok sabha elections and that's not even including the six other states where we have formidable alliances there are 18 states with more than where the congress has more than 30% vote share and there are 12 states where the congress has more than 15% vote share and in fact there are six states where the congress had a higher vote share than it did in goa so to say that goa is somehow the bastion of the congress party would be incorrect so far if you talk about these 2024 lok sabha elections let's remember uh, uh, you know the changing context of things that 2019 is one of those goa became one of those rare states where the bjp's vote share dipped and the congress's vote share rose right and what we are seeing in 24 right now is that the opposition compared to where it was in 2019 opposition alliance as a whole as well as the congress party and rahul gandhi they stand in much much better position as their credibility towards being an opposition towards being a government towards being political leaders however the current ruling government of narendra modi and the bjp they have a 10 year anti incumbency against them they have the covid failure they have demonetization failure they have gst failure and they have a whole bunch of other issues pertaining to foreign policy inflation unemployment your own surveys are showing state after state including in goa how unemployment corruption and inflation are the most important issues for the people of the country across states and this government has thoroughly failed on all of those issues so they will be going into the elections battling that anti incumbency while the congress and the india alliance will be going into the elections with the strong you know alternative that they are presenting to the people of the country with the strong opposition that they have shown to the people of the country and one more thing i would like to point out to you and your viewers that there i you know i i am i'm sure uh, you as well as other people on the panel have also sensed that that there is a strong undercurrent in the country that a lot of bjp supporters hardcore bjp and modi supporters are also not willing to vote willing to vote for this government in 2024 for the absolutely brazen autocratic and dictatorial tendencies of this government with you know putting opposition leaders in jail freezing the bank accounts of the largest opposition party and sabio i can see sabio smiling on it right now but i'm sure he's talked to a lot of bjp supporters who said the same in the past two days i spoken to two very cutter modi samarthaks who are like ab ki bar 400 par nahi chahiye bjp ko baad mein vote kar denge but not this time around because chunav aise nahi lada jata Hmm. so there is this undercurrent also that is playing in favor but, of but the congress but but nikhil if there is this so undercurrent think... that you speak of then then so why so many people from the congress party are switching to the bharatiya janata party because everybody knows and you see look at the ed race no ashok chavan he was implicated in the other scam praful patel he was implicated in an air india scam now i'm not saying these individuals did those scams or they did not but the fact is that they were charged by the ed and the cbi and they always did have a sword hanging over their head that they could any day go to jail where they will not you know even what, you know what the bjp would turn around and say nikhil is that vijendra singh and gaurav ballav had no ed cases on them they still switched <laughs> see there are multiple issues multiple reasons why people switch that it is also about getting a ticket in a particular place it is being said that vijendra singh wanted a ticket from mathura which he wasn't able to get and saudi could it also happen to, to be the army party quota all right could and, it, could, uh, it, could it also be could it also be about mr mishra advocate ganendra mishra about uh, you know basically surviving as a politician in this country uh, has it come down to that advocate mishra <coughs> No sir I can't sir. use your uh, sir 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 I can't use you 
uh, your frame and your audio is extremely poor. Let me go to Valmiki Nayak, Aam Admi Party spokesperson on the broadcast. Mr. Nayak, are you there with us? I'm there uh, and I apologize. I have to join from my car. I That's all right. To, I, I... That's okay as long as you're able to convey your message. But, well, the Aam Admi Party is... You know, I mean, if, if if I can say this, you know, it's in hot waters because of the funding that it received and it pumped into Goa. All of these are allegations, of course. It's, you know, if, if you don't get anything in Goa, then the, the scandal that, you know, the chief minister is in jail for is for nothing. Yeah, so like I said, uh, I apologize. I'm uh, joining from my car. Unfortunately, I happen to live in the smart city of Panaji in Goa, the capital <laughs> city of Goa, which has been completely destroyed. A heritage 200-year-old city has been destroyed by a scheme of the Modi Sarkar and you cannot get anywhere from one point to the other and so that's why I got stuck. <laughs> but to answer your question, uh, I think let me categorically say that both the seats of Lok Sabha in Goa are going to the India Alliance this time. BJP is not only losing, they're losing very badly. And I think your own data today shows that this is what is happening. If you see the vote shares of the NDA and the India Alliance, there's hardly a difference of 3 to 4 percent. And uh, 3 to 4 percent is less than a margin of error. Besides that, you have undecided voters in your data of about 10 percent. Uh, over and above that, you have to realize that as of today, India Alliance almost has had a very skeletal campaign. Uh, the candidates are not declared. The India Alliance partners have been distracted by, like you said, you know, all these, uh, you know, uh, these uh, conspiracies created by the by the BJP and the Modi Sarkar, like arresting our chief minister, uh, freezing Congress accounts. So considering all this. And comparing it to BJP, which has almost pumped so much money and misusing public money for party campaigning in Goa especially, I feel like we've had an overdose of Modi here in Goa. Like the moment you you wake up till the, till the time you slept, at least just before the code kicked in, all you could see and hear was Modi. Whether it was on the newspaper, on the radio, as you were driving to work, on the streets, there were cutouts, posters, hold, holdings. It was a complete overdose and people are genuinely sick and tired of seeing his face right now. So if you consider these lopsided campaigns, the extent to which BJP has campaigned and marketed itself, uh, opposed to the skeletal camp campaign of the, ca of the India Alliance, and then you look at your vote shares of hardly a 3 or 4 percent you know, difference as of today, once the India Alliance declares its candidates in Goa and we campaign uh, with on full throttle, I think those numbers are going to change drastically. And that is why I say that India Alliance is not only going to win in Goa, we're going to win with a huge margin. Hmm. Uh, you know, the main reason for that is that the double engine has horribly failed in Goa on multiple counts, you know, whether it is development, whether it is economy, whether it is, you know, basic, even emotional issues. Like, for example, in Goa, we have the Madhe issue. Madhe is a river. It is a lifeline of Goa that that basically starts from Karnataka and comes to Goa and and is the source of water for more than sixty percent of Goans. And the double engine, when the Karnataka government uh, was run by the BJP and the Goa government was run by the BJP and the central government was run by the BJP, you can call it a triple engine. All three engines conspired to deny the waters of the Madhe to Goa. And Goans are waiting for a chance to teach the BJP a lesson. This is one of the big issues that has uh, hurt Goans as far as the BJP is concerned. Besides that, as you know, you know the, the central government has been denying the state share of GST to various states. Of course, they target mostly the opposition state. But for some reason, Ramoth Savant also has not been able to get his fair share uh, from, the, from the central government. And this year's Goa budget, if you see, there was almost 0.01% increase from the last year. So when there's when the budget of the state is not growing, that means there is no development happening, there is no growth happening. Besides that, of course, you know, the issues that you have listed in your survey are very pertinent. We always, even though we are one of the smallest states, we always feature in some of the worst statistics. Like we have one of the highest unemployment in the country. We have mm. one of the highest inflation in the country. And we have one of the highest corruption in the country. 
uh, I think uh, Mr. Satyapal Malik, who is the former governor of Goa, a BJP man himself, was so completely uh, honest and blatant about his statement that there was corruption in Goa in everything to the point where there were demands for bribes not only from the chief minister but separately from the chief minister's wife. It was a family affair. Okay. When okay. It came let, to let's Savio respond. You've said a lot. You've made a number of accusations. And uh, Savio, well, it seems that uh, Mr. Nayak believes that the, the India alliance is uh, going to be victorious in Goa. The BJP has not been living up to its promises. And the prime minister is actually uh, fighting anti incumbency. Well, uh, I know Valmiki personally, and I respect his point of view, so I've always respected everybody's point of view. However, I am I believe that they're entitled to living in that hope that they have. But let's look at the issues that he's raised, and let's start with the first point of Satyapal Malik. Satyapal Malik was not and is not a BJP person. Just because he was a governor does not make him a BJP person. Everybody knows his political inclinations, number one. Number two, when Satyapal Malik made the allegations against the chief minister and allegedly, according to Valmiki Naik, against the chief minister's wife, in the interest of the state of Goa, which he was the governor, because he made the allegations when he was not the governor of Goa, when he was a governor of another state, in the interest of the state of Goa, and if there ever was such large-scale corruption, why did Satyapal Malik not put out evidences to prove his claims? And why was it only a hit and run? Hit and run. That's what has been done by Satyapal Malik. So that's point number one. Point number two, the Mahade issue. On this, I agree with Valmiki Naik that we, as a collective unit of Goa, need to work with the centre. And the state has been doing that as far as the, the Made issue is concerned. It is a serious issue, but there has to be collective consensus between Goa, Karnataka and the centre. And there is a plan that the CM has worked out. And in course of times, that will come into reality. Because let's be clear of one thing. If Made is restricted, then we are going to face water shortages in Goa. And that is exactly what we are seeing on the, the water shortages in the dams and go and that's that's a valid point. Point number three, as far as unemployment is concerned and people talking about unemployment is concerned, you know, I get a little confused when people talk about unemployment because they don't define what unemployment really is. Are you talking about unemployment with regards to government jobs? Are you talking about unemployment as with regards to people working? Because how is it that so many people, when, when they are not in government jobs, are still working in other places. There's so much of entrepreneurship happening. There's so much of, of uh, elevation of poverty happening. How does poverty elevation happen if people are not having money in their hands? So you have to look at various factors. Yes, it is a concern. I'm not saying it's not. But what are the yardsticks that define unemployment in this country? And that's what we need to take a serious look at, irrespective of the political party, right? The fourth issue, as far as where, what, you know, he went on saying Modi, Modi, Modi everywhere. Modi is everywhere in Goa, primarily because people are like him. You might not like him and that's fine. But there are many people that like him. There are many people who appreciate what he has done over the last 10 years. And there are many people who would repose that faith in Narendra Modi. And that's why they'll vote for the Lotus and vote for the BJP. Now, you might think comparing numbers, comparing every data possible, that yes, there is a chance for the India Alliance. I'm also saying there's a chance for the India Alliance in South Goa. However, to, in order to get close to beating the BJP, especially in South Goa, you need to be able to come together as a team. And as soon as a candidate is declared, write it down what I'm saying, there will be complete disarray in the Congress, not the Ahmadmi party, the Congress. There will be complete disarray and people within the Congress itself will disagree with the candidate. That is why they are not able to decide on the candidate right now. They are working on their traditional style of functioning, which is choosing on the basis of religion, well as they should be choosing a candidate that is okay, welcoming. Let's, uh, let's see what Mr. Arsha Sharma has to say about uh, uh, what you have said about the Congress Party no, and I the India to, Alliance. I want to respond to Arsha one second. Quickly, Can quickly. Just Ten seconds. So he spoke about Utpal Parikar, he spoke about 
Vishwajit Rane, he spoke about all these other so-called divisions in the BJP. Let me tell you and let me reassure you, whatever the divisions you might think exist in the BJP, just like in a family, there will always be difference of opinions, but we keep them within the family and we work together as a family. Unfortunately for the Congress, they have never been able to do that. And that is why when they could have formed the government in 2017, they were not able to get their house in order because that time Digvijay Singh himself was sleeping somewhere else while ensuring that the government was formed here. And that is how BJP came into Goa the second time. So we don't need a lecture from the, from the Congress about how to deal with the BJP family. This is all in-house. We know how and when, what, how to come together as far as elections are concerned and as far as governance is concerned. All right. Mr. Arshu Sharma, you want to respond to what Savio has said? Yes. Nigel, I want to respond to each and everyone who spoke uh, just go on, now. Go on, go on. So, first of all, I am coming to Savio Ji. Yeah. So, Savio Ji is saying that uh, Modi Ji is everywhere in Goa. Exactly. Modi Ji is everywhere in Goa, on posters, paper, on news channels, on the roads, on the streets, in the holdings and banners. But is nowhere when it comes to uh, the problems of Goa. I want to ask uh, Savio ji what Narendra Modi ji is doing about the failure of a smart city Panjil. We see road accidents at 21 year old uh, in January uh, got into a uh, uh, path hole and died because of mismanagement in this smart city project. There was another case where uh, a car collided with a motorcycle and uh, the guy who was riding the motorcycle uh, uh, fall into the river and uh, uh, he met with an accident and rising accident is also a major uh, problem in Goa. What Prime Minister is doing with the problems of unemployment in Goa? What he is doing with uh, uh, your uh, Madhavi issue? Uh, what he's doing with dual citizenship, I want to ask uh, Savio ji and I want him to respond that it's okay that he's on newspaper, he's on news channels everywhere in Goa, but what is he doing for the people of Goa, that is what matters. Now I'm coming uh, to another thing which is about our candidates. See, we still have almost uh, 12, 15 days uh, for the last date of nominations. So what is your problem? Lok Sabha elections are happening in seven phases. We have other states to uh, decide about the candidates. Our party has a system of deciding candidates. We don't have two people uh, from a particular state called Gujarat who will sit and decide all the candidates and they will release the list. We have a panel, we have a process and that process uh, has been completed. There are discussions going on and each and every uh, state has a process and that process will take time and if it will be announced at the right time. Uh, one more panelist, I don't know her name, she said that uh, Sonia Gandhi is running away from contested elections and she uh, went to the Rajya Sabha. I want to ask her what's happening with uh, J.P. Nadda ji. So he is uh, a very popular uh, BJP president, no. We have uh, won a huge, uh, many number of elections. BJP has uh, won under his uh, leadership. What he is doing, why is in Rajya Sabha from Gujarat? Why not from Himachal Pradesh? Why is not contesting Lok Sabha elections? Let us decide who will contest Amity, who will contest Raibareli, who will go to the Rajya Sabha, who are the media persons and uh, BJP persons to decide what Congress will do. And sir, uh, I have a problem with your survey also. I want to draw public attention on your survey on question number three. How has Narendra Modi and as Prime Minister average good, very good, can't say. I thought there was, uh, there should be an option of poor performance also. Let people decide that he is performing uh, average good, very good, can't say or poor or uh, very poor. What kind of survey is this? <laughs> well, average, average I, I does. I can't understand. Well, average yeah, does equate to. Well, well, average no, no, no. is average but, is as but, bad but as poor. But there is something below average also, na? 
no 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 so why can't you write poor directly you have two options of good and very good why can't we have two options on poor mr. and very mr. poor sharma this is the poor. this is this is the what format that we've been exercising and no, you're no, the first no, person and, and, to object no 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 sir and i don't no. i don't see that no, really sir, relevant to your no, position sir. as a congress sir, spokesperson i am the first person to object yes you are sir sir please you sir, are the let, first person and i really don't know understand what does this have to do what does that have to do if if you have an opinion about the prime minister you can say it instead of targeting our survey you can say it no, right no, no. it's a free country I, but i don't see, think you have an opinion see, we are not get, so, sir sir vinit ji vinit ji vinit ji give me 10 seconds give me 10 seconds uh, uh see election commission or the government in power is not doing us uh, level playing field the wall liner to be in jail mr sharma i am losing you mr sharma mr feet. sharma your connection is not stable mr sharma <laughs> is there a problem i think poor now i can hear you we were not trying to ignore you i can hear you now go on ha ah, yes oh no sorry oh no sir okay, don't sir. don't yes, don't, sir. don't be so skeptical uh, go on we are not getting uh, getting so sir 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 please please let me speak don't waste my time Uh, I know all these tactics. You right? are wasting so, my time. You are not getting uh, to the I'm point. Okay, I am not going to allow you to continue anymore. Right, you are, you are in sir. fact wasting no, my time, and you are wasting let everybody else's time as well. Rajesh Lakshmi Joshi, I want you to come in now. Uh, you know, Mr. Sharma has said a lot. In fact, he is uh, taking pot shots at the Prime Minister as well, which were unnecessary because it's not about you know the language of the survey. It's about the mood of the people that we've, we've been trying to convey uh, and pointing out nitpicking. something which really doesn't affect the discourse with which you are representing your party is futile to me raja lakshmi joshi ah uh, vinit uh, you know we have all heard about this thing about uh, you know nachna jane angan teda you know all those kind of uh, sayings we have heard so uh, you know it's like uh, you can't do anything about the survey so you say i don't like the survey you have not surveyed it well so uh, you know in, in in any case we will all see the results on the 4th of june so that is a, a different thing altogether but uh, yes you have definitely uh, differentiated about uh, whether people are uh, you know uh, extremely happy about uh, pm modi if, if they find him to be good not good and can't say you know all those kind of differentiations are there and you have been i i think you have been pretty honest about it so uh, uh, but uh, you know uh, there is a huge a uh, factor there that you know like i was telling you earlier that you know people definitely are feeling a pinch of uh, inflation which i don't deny which which nobody can deny and yet at the same time th there are so many other factors that they still want the same prime minister so that is uh, that is because of two reasons because you know the pm has definitely made a lot of achievements he has had a lot of things to bring to the table and and not only that he is talking about vision 2047 and here you have leaders who are talking about 1947 they are talking about things like uh, you know caste census and all that and they don't know what they're going to do after the caste census so all of that you know is definitely a huge there is a huge gap between the vision of uh, you know one party here and the other party so that you know nobody can deny and uh, that is the reason why even if there is inflation i still want this person as my prime minister that is what people are saying and that is i think a huge uh you know uh, that's a huge message to the opposition parties and instead of accepting it and introspecting they telling you that your survey is wrong uh mm. you know another thing is that uh, you know the, there are all these uh, uh, leaders who have uh, had the sense of entitlement about certain constituency <laughs> like I about i haven't about about mrs sharma you did not speak when it was your turn please allow me now see uh, there are all these uh, leaders who have a sense of entitlement we need about about these constituencies about these let her finish mr sharma mr sharma let her finish let her finish her point nobody interrupted you in fact you interrupted yourself nobody interrupted you go on uh vinit so instead of instead of taking up the leadership <laughs> and and facing the electorate you know you have this case where there is no candidate is yet announced for amethi or rai bareilly and you know in the entire state of uttar pradesh they have almost let it go as if you know they are falling short of people they are falling short of candidate they are falling short of resources so they don't want to focus their uh, attention on a place where they know that they're going to lose 
that is that is exactly what I'm hearing everywhere. So this is something that I find it extremely strange. If you feel that there is something, uh, there is a the party that is strong somewhere, you need to be putting in double the efforts. If you right. feel that let's, you are let's weak let's open Nikhil Jain also. Nikhil, do you do you agree with this fact that you know when it comes to selecting who's going to be leading, who's going to be running your state or your country? Uh, you know, the choices become very, very subjective. You know, if you look at Delhi, for example, you know, the Aam Aadmi Party, you know, hands down uh, comes to the minds of the people who want to see Arvind Kejriwal as the chief minister, regardless of the, uh, you know, troubles uh, uh, he finds himself in today. But when it comes to choosing a leader at the national level, those very same people want Prime Minister Modi. This is a phenomena that needs to be accepted for what it is. So, we need, so I would agree that there is a section of the society who are, is going to vote for the Prime Minister no matter what. We've all seen those funny videos where people are going around saying petrol Modi ko Of course, there is a section of the society like that, but I very strongly feel that the average voter is smart enough to understand what lies in their best interest and it is not in their best interest to have a government that is completely failing on inflation, unemployment, corruption and all of those things. We've all, all seen the Hafta Masuli racket that has come out with the electoral bonds, uh, you know, uh, disclosure that has come to place. Also, Raji Lakshmi made an important point that this government is talking about Vixit Bharat, Dohazar, Santalis, Ka Sankalp and the opposition is talking about 1947 caste census and all of these things. First of all, when you're talking about giving rights to people who have historically been disadvantaged, that is not talking about the past, that is correcting a wrong of the past in the present to make for a better future. Secondly, when she talks about 2047 Ka Sankalp, Notice how things have changed with the BJP. In 2014, we were made promises for 2022, a very tangible, foreseeable future. Here, yeah, farmers' incomes would be doubled, black money would be brought back, bullet trains would be brought, this and that, this and that. Very good promises. People agreed to them, people voted for them. But when the government has thoroughly failed on them, what they're trying to do is pull the can so far down the road that you can't just see it. 2047, for heaven's sake, that 23 years into the future, I'm not even sure if Narendra Modi would still be around to see that or too many of the leaders in the country would be around to see that. That is just, you know, creating a false uh, fascination in the world and also not just 2047. Narendra Modi had also said, Main agle saal ki He's also talked about the next thousand years, which by the way, coincidentally, is also something Hitler said that I am creating this right for the next 1000 years. So these are all hollow promises. Also talking about going back into the past. Look at what the BJP is doing with the Kacha TV violent issue in Sri Lanka. When this own government in 2015, during an RTI reply, when S.J. Shankar, the now foreign minister, was the foreign secretary, had clearly said that we have not ceded any sovereign territory and Kachativu Island was something that was not within India's sovereign domain. And it did lie some beyond the maritime boundary of India. Now, the same government is raking up that issue, which has been settled decades ago, which is not a public or a popular demand in Tamil Nadu, just so that they can, you know, pander to a certain section of the society and get more votes, even if it comes at a cost of, you know, foreign relations and diplomatic relations with Sri Lanka, which anyway is causing up to China. China is looking to set up a naval okay. base in Sri Lanka, which would be a problem for us. All right. So the point is, this government makes only hollow promises. There is nothing substantial. All right. I'm sure there's, there's more to that. And uh, we've run out of time for somebody to counter that. But appreciate everyone. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.